In this lecture, we're going to discuss electric current density and drift velocity of electrons. So let's begin by looking at the following cross section of a conducting wire. So if a voltage difference is applied between the two ends of our conducting wire so that this end is our higher potential and this end is our lower potential, an electric field will be created, will be produced inside our conducting wire and it will begin on the higher potential side and end on the lower potential side. So it will point in the positive direction along our x-axis. Now because electrons have a negative charge, electrons will travel beginning at our lower potential, the negative end, and ending at our higher potential, the positive end. So electrons essentially travel in the opposite direction of the electric field, in the opposite direction of the electric current. Now electric current defined by I travels in this direction and is a macroscopic quantity. By macroscopic, we simply mean it describes the movements of many electrons, of a chunk of electrons over some given unit of time. So now we define a microscopic quantity called the current density given by a lowercase j. So this essentially describes the movement of a single electron within a conducting wire. Now J, our current density, is defined as the quantity of electric charge given by I per unit area, where the unit area is simply the cross-sectional area of our conducting wire. Now we can rearrange this equation and we get the following result. Our I, our electric current, is given by taking the product of the area and the current density. And this equation only works as long as our electric field produced within our conducting wire is assumed to be uniform. Now if our electric field is not uniform, if it's non-constant, then we have to take the integral. So in that case, our electric current I is equal to the integral of the dot product of our current density given by J and our infinitely small section of our area given by dA. Now, notice that J, that current density, is a vector. It has magnitude as well as direction. Now, J points in the direction that a positive charge would flow within our electric field. So in this case, our current density would point in this direction. And this implies that the flow of electrons is given in the direction of negative current density. So our electric current flows in this direction and the electrons flow in the opposite direction. So let's actually examine how a single electron will flow within our conducting wire. So once again, electrons flow in the opposite direction of the electric field. So if the electric field points in this direction, our electrons will flow in the opposite direction. They will flow from the lower potential, the negative side, to the higher potential, the positive side. Now, as electrons travel through our conducting wire, they make many collisions with other atoms and molecules found within our wire. So that means the pathway of a single electron will have a zigzag form as shown in the following diagram. Now, although the velocity varies of our electron when it travels through our wire because of these collisions, electrons usually reach a steady average velocity that is known as the electron drift velocity given by D with a lo uh, given by V with the D symbol as our subscript. Now, Let's try to build a relationship between the current density given by J and our drift velocity given by VD. So once again, let's examine our section of our conducting wire. Now over some time given by change in T, our electrons will travel a distance given by L. Now let's suppose their velocity is given by the drift velocity, then that means if we 
take our time interval given by change in t in seconds and multiply by vd given in meters per second, this product will give us the distance. Let's suppose this distance is given by L. So this is our distance that we're examining over some time interval given by change in t. Now over this same time interval, electrons found in a volume given by V, if our area is given by A, then the volume is simply our area multiplied by L, our length. Now, length is defined as the product of our drift velocity and the change in time. So A becomes, um, so L becomes our drift velocity multiplied by change in T multiplied by A, and that is our volume. So over this time, electrons in a volume of V will travel through our wire as shown in the following section. So these are our electrons. This is our volumetric section. And the volume is given by this equation. Now, let's define lowercase n as the number of electrons found in this section per unit volume, where uppercase n is the number of free electrons found in the section given by the following blue dots. Now, let's ask ourselves how much quantity of electric charge is found in this section. So to find the quantity of electric charge, we simply take the number of electrons found in this section and multiply it by the quantity of charge found in one electron. So, change in Q is equal to the number of electrons multiplied by the charge found on a single electron. Now, the number of electrons is given by uppercase n. So we can rearrange our equation and solve for n, and n is equal to lowercase n multiplied by v. So this becomes lowercase n multiplied by v, and the charge on one electron is given by negative e, where e is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So, so our change in Q becomes N multiplied by the volume, and the volume is given by this equation. So we replace volume with this equation as we do in this section. And then we multiply by our negative E. So the total quantity of charge found in this section is equal to N multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the drift velocity, multiplied by change in T, multiplied by negative A. Now, by definition, the electric current I is equal to the change in our charge, the total charge in this section, divided by our change in time. That gives us our electric current in this volumetric section. Now, change in Q is equal to this, so we plug that into this top. Notice we have change in T on top and bottom, we can cancel those out, and we see the electric current in this small section is equal to negative multiplied by N, multiplied by E, multiplied by A, multiplied by the drift velocity. Now let's go back to this equation. We said the current density J is equal to I multiplied by A. So we see that J is equal to I, this quantity, divided by A. So the A's appear on top and bottom. We cancel them and we see that J, the current density, is equal to negative of N, where N is simply the number of free electrons per unit volume multiplied by the quantity of charge on one electron given by E multiplied by the drift velocity of our our electron. So we build a relationship between our charge or our current density and our drift velocity and that's given by the following equation. So notice the negative sign simply indicates that direction of our current flow is the opposite of electron flow.